We'll be in John chapter 1, and I'm really excited about this. I want to say, my, my friend Darwin Eason, he says, uh, I never saw that stuff before. And I can say, I told him I was going to beat him to it. A lot of this stuff I never saw before. You say, well, you haven't read John 1? Oh, I didn't say that. I've read John 1 many times, many, many times. And I was thinking about it this past week, and, and then I was reading it, and, and I thought, well, I'll just write down some things that I see in John 1. The facts. The facts. I like to listen to old-time radio. I listen to Jack Webb, and uh, he plays Joe Friday. And he's interviewing somebody. He says, the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. So I'm going to read John chapter 1. I'm going to read down through the 11th verse, and then we're going to look at the facts of John chapter 1. But I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to ask you to think about it. The Bible says that He's the Word, and He's the life, and He's the light. And the Bible says that He came to His own. So I want to ask you this question. Right now, before we read anything, who do you think His own are? It's different than I used to think. Well, let's just read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Okay, I like that. Let's keep going. In Him was life. That's what it says. And the life was the light of men. Okay. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse 6. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all, now look at that word, all might believe through him. Verse 8. He was not the light, we're talking about John, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. I said it slow for emphasis. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. And I'm going to stop, and we're going to go back, and we're going to examine the facts, and then we're going to look at a couple more verses. Okay. Here's some facts about the Word. Kind of divided this up into four points. And the first one is the facts about the Word. Okay. First fact. The Bible says the Word is from the beginning. The Word has no beginning. It has no end. Now, when I say it, I'm going to tell you the Word is a person. Okay. But this person has no beginning and he has no end. What do we call that? He's eternal. The Word is from the beginning. The Bible says here that the Word was with God. The Word was with God. It has no beginning and, it's, and the Word, a, a thing, but it's a person. He's a person. He, he was with God. And then the Bible says, here there's a big shift. The Word was God. Now, does that mean the Word is not God anymore? No, doesn't mean that. He was God, and He is God, and He always will be God. The Word is a person. We're talking about Jesus right here. We're talking about Yahweh. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 58, He said, before Abraham was born... I am. He claimed to be God, and the Jews picked up stones to stone him because they understood what he was saying. He was claiming to be God. He was claiming to be the Word. In the Old Testament, in the very beginning, the Bible says, Yahweh, I am, who Jesus claimed to be, who the Bible says is the Word, who the Bible says is from the beginning. Before anything existed, he already was. The Bible says that Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. He created everything. Then he created all the living beings on the earth. And then he created man in his image from the dust of the ground. Then he did this. He didn't do this with the animals, but he did it with man. 
The Bible said that he breathed life into man. Whose life did he breathe into man? He breathed his life. Now, we're not talking about being alive because the animals were alive. They had a physical life. But this life, the life of the Word, was breathed into man in the beginning. Man sinned. The Bible said man disobeyed God. Man thought he had to do something to be like God. Satan told him, he says, if you'll eat from this, the reason he doesn't want you to do it is because he knows the day that you eat from that, you'll be just like him. And you'll know right from wrong. Well, that was part right and part wrong. And if it's part right and part wrong, it's a lie. He said, the day you eat from it, you'll be just like him. That's a lie. Why? Because he was created, man was created in the image of the Word who was from the beginning. That's whose image he was, he was created into, and that's whose life was breathed into him. He was already like God in the sense. Now, and then he said, and this was true, the day you eat from it, you'll know right from wrong. God never intended for man to live a right and wrong life, knowing right from wrong. He intended for man to live a Jesus life, believing life. Two trees, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, tree of life. And the tree of life is the Jesus tree. And because he's in you and you're in him from creation, you were created that way, he intended for you to allow him to live his life through you as you live your life in him. Right and wrong won't be an issue. Just live in Christ. But man made it something that you do. And they're still struggling with that today. Man is still struggling that, with that today. Okay. The Word was God. Now the Word is deity. And the Word is a person. Some more facts. Now here's another thing we know about the Word. All things came into being through the Word. Creation. The God of creation is none other than God the Son. Now, was God the Father involved? Of course He was, because everything that God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit do, they're all involved. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. He created everything. The first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day He created man. And the seventh day He rested. God is a God of order. God is a God of creation. God creates things that weren't there before. He speaks them into existence. That's God. The Word was not created, though. The Word is a person who has always been. He tells man. Man doesn't tell him. Now, what man does today, we say, God, I'll do this because it's right. And I won't do this because it's wrong. Well, you don't know. The very things that you might call right, God might say, no, that's not what I want. And the very thing you might say, well, no, 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 God, I won't do that. And God may say, well, that's exactly what I want you to do. God may have you go some places. Others would say, you did what? God may have you go into a bar. You say, wait a minute, I don't believe you ought to go into a bar. Jesus did. Jesus went places where you wouldn't go. I'm not saying to go into bars. I'm just saying, quit even thinking that way. Be who you are, where you are. You say, well, if you do that, you'll just do all kinds of crazy things. No, you won't. No, you won't. Jesus knows. And he's in control. Apart from him, the Bible says, nothing came into existence. Those are facts. I'm just giving you the facts. The Bible says, in him was life. Okay? In him was life. Now here it is. The word equals light. We're going to see. And it equals life. Word, light, life, all the same person. Jesus is life. There is no life apart from Jesus. He's saying God's in the trees. That's pantheism. That is not what I'm saying. If you want to hear that, then go right ahead. I can't, I can't convince you of anything. Don't even want to try. I'm just going to tell you that life is in Jesus. True life. The life. I'm not talking about being alive. I'm telling you that life is in Jesus. And we're going to look at that. And light is. He is light. In him was life. It says, now listen to what it says. There is no life apart from him. There's nothing apart from him. Life is a living being, Christ. Life is a spirit. 
The Bible describes the Spirit of God as the wind. We don't see physically Jesus now, but the Holy Spirit has revealed Him to our hearts. We can know things that we can't see. In fact, Jesus said, your faith is so great because you're believing what you're not even seeing with your eyes. Life is a spirit. Well, man is physically alive, but it's more than that. Man is a spirit being. Now you say, you're talking about believers. Nope, I'm talking about everybody. God set man apart for a purpose. Why? What was the purpose he set man apart? To have relationship with him. Not for man to do anything. God doesn't need you to do anything. We already know he created the world from nothing. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need me to be the hands for him on this earth. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 24 and 25, He doesn't need our hands, you know, as if He needed anything. God created us for relationship with Him. Now, the Bible says man sinned, fell short of the glory of God. You know the story. Okay, He did. But God is so great, He gave a picture in the garden when He shed innocent blood to make a covering for man's sin. God restored relationship with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve didn't restore relationship with God. Adam and Eve hid from God. God did not hide from Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were sought by God. They did not seek God. You're not seeking God. God sought you. And it was a picture of what he was going to do. And some people say he didn't do it for everybody. I'm going to show you. He did it for everybody. And now you say some people won't like what you're saying. You know what? I'm old now. I really don't care anymore whether they like it or not. The truth is the truth. Now, I want everybody, I want everybody to like me. Everybody wants to be liked. But you have to get over that. And you have to understand. You've got to tell people the facts. So I'm just giving you the facts. Man is a spirit being. The Spirit of God was breathed into man. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The life is the light of men. That's what the Bible says. Here we go. The life. Who is the life? The word. Who are we talking about? Jesus, the creator. The life is the light of men. Do you know what light does? Light exposes. We're going to see some things. You say light exposes darkness. And we think oh, darkness, sin. Life exposes sin. That's not what we're talking about right here. Light is revelation that exposes life. The light of God exposes the life that has been given to you. Is that a little different than I've always thought? It is. Is sin real? Of course it is. Does God hate sin? Absolutely. He hates your sin. You say, why? Because it hurts you. Not because he hadn't dealt with it, because he's dealt with it on the cross. The Bible says that Jesus became sin so that you might become the righteousness of God in him. Sin is not an issue anymore. Believing and receiving the light, the life, the word who has been given is the issue now. Sin is a non-issue as far as God is concerned. Does he hate it? Yes, because it hurts you still. And he doesn't want you to be hurt because he loves you. The life is the light of men. Light is revelation that exposes life. I like that. The light. The word of God, Jesus. Told of the life that had been given to him and that is his, they did not receive his revelation about the life that had been given. People didn't receive it. It had been given. This life has been given. Look at this. It says, the light shines, let me, ver for in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now, the issue is not if the light shines or not. Do you know that light shines on men whether they believe it or not? 
If I take a flashlight, boy, I've got a powerful flashlight now. It's a new flashlight. It's an LED flashlight, and that baby puts out 500 lumens. I mean, you can, you can light up the sky with that flashlight. It's so great. But if I take that flashlight, which will blind a man that can see, if you shine it in a man's eyes who's blind, he won't know it's there, but it's still there. I'm telling you, the light, the person, the light is for all men. But some of them don't see it. Some of them haven't received it. In verse 5, it says, the light shines in the darkness. It's not an issue of if the light will shine. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness. Shines. It means to bring forth into the light. The purpose of the light is to bring others into the light. Now, the purpose of the light is to bring others into Jesus. The Word, the life, the light, they're all Jesus. The purpose of the light is to bring people into Jesus. Now you say, well, they'll, they'll be in him when they believe him. Nope, the light's for all men. Let's just keep going. The shining light brings forth those in the darkness into light. Here it is. The light causes men to see what already is. In the beginning, God created. The light causes men to see what has already happened. Does Christ need to die on the cross? No. Why? Because he's died. And he was buried. And he was raised. And it's finished. And there's nothing else to do. Now, when Jesus, he was meeting with John right here, who was his cousin, a few months older. When Jesus was here, he hadn't physically died yet. But in eternity, he already had. Because the cross is eternal. And the cross is for all men. And even though it hadn't happened yet, it's still real. It causes men to see what he's already done. He, the light, is not causing anything to be here. Because he already has. The light is revealing what already was. The darkness, the Bible said, did not comprehend it. Did not comprehend what was. They did not comp comprehend who was. The light is a person. The Word is a person. The life is a person. When Jesus gives life, He has given Himself. He is the life. Okay. The second point, we're going to see a witness about the Word. Verse 6. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that, look at this, all might believe through him. Who did Jesus do what he did for? Help me with this word. It's a three-letter word in verse 7. What is the word that causes many people to struggle in that verse? All. all. So that all. All might believe through him. That's pretty big. It's for all men. A witness about the word. A man sent from God. You know, the Bible says that, that literally the only one we know of besides Jesus, I mean, different with Jesus, but the only man born of a woman and a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb was John the Baptist. The Bible said that when Mary came into the presence of John's mother, when he was still in her womb, is the Bible said that the baby leaped in her womb because in the, being in the presence, literally, of the unborn Christ child. His name was John. He came as a witness. Now, this word witness right here, it's a word that we don't understand. The Greek word for witness, and I don't know why they don't go ahead and just say what it is. The Greek word for witness is martyr. He came as a martyr. You say, that means a martyr is somebody who dies. That's exactly right. That's what a witness is. A witness is somebody who has died and he's been buried and he's been raised to walk in newness of life. A martyr. He's a martyr with his life. Will you say, John physically died. Yes, he did. He physically died. He had his head cut off. But you see, 
it had already happened in eternity past. And I'm not talking about the physical death. You see, the resurrection of Christ is when the life is revealed. But it's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. It talks about in Romans 6, 4. You have died with Christ. You've not been called to die with Christ. You've been called to know that you've died with Christ based on what he did. Well, that is what we are. We're witnesses. Now, a witness with his life is one who gives testimony with his life. Testimony. Now, the Bible talks about he testified. He said he came as a witness to testify about the light. In this word, testify, this is an aorist subjunctive. That means once and for all. We say you testify all the time. No, no, you testify one time. One time. This witness, you do this one time time. Let me tell you when that time was. When you died and were buried and was raised. You're talking about what has already happened. Now John didn't even understand all this. Later on he sent his disciples to Jesus while he was in prison. He said, are you the one or do we look for another? John, the one with the baby while he was still a pre-born baby. I like the way I said that. Pre-born baby. That's a baby that leapt or leaped in his mother's womb. <laughs> Even he had doubts. You'll have doubts. It's okay. Don't be afraid of your doubts. you got doubts. Say, Lord, I just have some doubts here. He'll say, it's all right. I can handle it. And just go to him. He'll answer. And the way that Jesus answered him, he said, well, go back and say, have you seen the, you know, the lame walk? The dumb speak, the sightless see, the, the deaf hear. You seen these things? Yeah. I got it. Thank you, Lord. You are the one. He had already died in Christ from eternity past. So have you. Now, many have not believed this. You see, they don't understand that the death, the burial, and the resurrection was for them too. The death, the burial, the resurrection is for everyone. Even those whose eyes are blind who cannot see, who do not know that the death of Christ and the burial and the resurrection was for all men. They do not know, they have not believed, they have not received, even though it's already been given, the gift of Christ giving his life. Zoe. That's what that means. Pretty cool. They do not know what he has done. They must believe this. They must believe it. But friends, whether they believe it or not, truth's truth. Now, will truth benefit them if they don't believe it? <sighs> they need to believe it. But it's still truth. He testified about the light. Now, he did not testify though so that the light would do something. He was testifying of what the light had already done. When Jesus came walking up, he said, the Son of Man who removes the sin of the world. Already done it. In God's mind, in eternity past, he'd already done it, even though he was just showing up on the scene. Already done it. Completed. He testified so that all might believe who the light is and what the light has already done. I was talking to a lady the other night, and it was really cool because uh, she said, when, when she was hearing this stuff, and, and, and she probably was not a believer up to this point, she, she didn't have any response of argument except for one thing. The Bible, I mean, it's not a Bible thing, but she just started to cry. When she, when she began to understand this, she just started to cry. She just started to cry. She said enough. I understood. She was crushed, but in, amazing, in an amazing way. In verse 8, it says, he, John was not the light, but he testified about the light. He was not the light, but you know what? He was in the light. In verse 9, now this is the third point. The true light comes to enlighten every man. Now look at verse 9. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. Now, we're going to talk about this. Enlighten means to give light, reveal light. 
but to reveal what is, not what will be. The light is already there. Enlighten equals to give light. Okay. Light equals life. Jesus said, it says of Jesus, he was the light and he was the life. Does it not say that? And he's come to enlighten. Let me share what that means. This means that the light is to reveal to man that he has given life to every man. Does it say he enlightens every man? Does it say that? It does. Does that mean every man is believed? No. I wish it did. Doesn't mean that. You say, you're saying everybody's saved. That's not what I'm saying. You're saying everybody's going to heaven. That's not what I'm saying. You're saying nobody's going to hell. I get so tired of even having to give the dis dis this disclaimer. I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you that the life of Christ has been given to every man. And I want to enlighten you. If you don't believe this, you need to believe it. But it's done. It's finished. I'm asking you to believe what has already been done. Simple. So simple. What a big deal. He was in the world, the Bible says. He was in the world, verse 10. And the world was made through him. Now the world represents Jesus. I mean, represents man, excuse me. Now, we've got trees and, and we've got m the moon, the sun, the stars. We've got all of these things, you know, the universe. We've got grass. We've got ground. We've got ocean. We've got all these things. And the Bible does say that all of creation is groaning, waiting on his return. But when we talk about the world right here, we're talking about men. For God so loved the world, man, that he gave his only begotten son. He was in the world. And the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. And that's a big deal. No. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit wants you to know him. I wrote a book in the first chapter, and uh, boy, I'm going to edit it. And when I read it, I just cringe. And I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and he said, I didn't see that. And I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord you didn't see the untruth that I wrote. I made this statement. I did not know Jesus. That was true. And he did not know me. That was untrue. <laughs> he knows everything. How stupid is that? Man, that was a dumb thing I wrote. So if you've ever read that book, then I'm sorry. He did know me. I didn't know him, but he knew me. The Bible says in verse 11, now this is where I really didn't see it. He came to his own. And you know who I thought his own were? The Jews. Well, of course the Jews were his own. He is of the seed of Abraham. He, I'm sorry, he is the seed of Abraham. And so are you because you're in him. Not because you're a Jew if you're a Jew. So it's not about a Jew or Gentile here. He said, he came to his own. Who is his own? The world. Who did he create? Everything. Everybody. Who did he enlighten? Every man. He came to his own. Man. And those who were his own, man, did not receive him. All are his. The whole world. His own did not receive him. That's the issue. He's finished with everything. It's done. The witness is not to try to get to do something, get people to do something so that God will do something. We don't try to get people to believe this so that God will forgive them. He's already done that. We want people to receive as their own, from their perspective, what already is theirs from God's perspective. You say, well, I don't understand that. Well, ask God to show you. Because I can't explain it, so you will understand it. We're asking people to receive this life, the light, the Word, that has come for you, and the life that has been given to you. And to have your heart enlightened as to what it is Christ has done. I'm asking you to believe Him and receive Him. Him. I used to think that it was just for the Jews. I was wrong. Every man. Every man is enlightened by the light. That doesn't mean that every man sees. Must have his eyes open. You can't believe in your own power. You can't believe in your own power. But God is the one who will reveal what is going on. You say, well, I just don't see it. That's okay. 
Say, Lord, give me the ability to see this. And he will. You say, I've had some requests for me to do an evangelistic message. This is one of them. This is it. I'm not trying to get you to do anything. I'm just trying to get you to believe that what he's already done is for you. It's really simple. The light came for every man. Every man must receive the light. But they're still his own, whether they do or whether they don't. Will it benefit them? Yes. I believe that some people will reject Christ, reject this life that he's given them to the very end. I don't understand that. I have no clue as to why. Do I want it to be so? No. But my testimony is this. I'm going to let the light testify through me. It is finished. What he's done, he's done for you, for all men. What he has given himself, his life has been given to you. Forgiveness, yeah, you've been forgiven, of course you have. We spend so much time on that, we miss all the really good stuff. Yes, you've been forgiven, but his life has been given to you. Believe it. Receive it. Yeah, you're righteous because He's righteous. Yeah, you're holy because He's holy. Yeah, your position is in Him on His throne. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, because that's where He is and you're in Him. You're perfect. He said, perfect, yeah, because He is. I'm not talking about your flesh. I'm talking about your true identity. Believe it. It's really simple. I don't have anything else this week. See you all next time. Bye-bye.